हरि ओम स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अनदर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पॉलिनोमियल्स इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास वी डिस्कस अबाउट रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन जीरोस एंड कोरिलेशंस ऑफ ए पॉलिनोमियल इन क्लास 10 पॉलिनोमियल वी हैव मेजरली टू टाइप्स ऑफ पॉलिनोमियल्स वन इज क्वाड्रेटिक पॉलिनोमियल अनदर वन इज क्यूबिक पॉलिनोमियल सो द क्वाड्रेटिक पॉलिनोमियल द जनरल फॉर्म ऑफ ए क्वाड्रेटिक पॉलिनोमियल इज ax स्क्वायर प्लस bx प्लस c व्हेन a इज नॉट इक्वल टू 0 हियर a इज नथिंग बट कॉल्ड लीडिंग कोएफिशिएंट x स्क्वायर इज द हाईएस्ट टर्म एंड इट्स कोएफिशिएंट इज व्हाट a सो दैट a इज कॉल्ड लीडिंग कोएफिशिएंट दैट a शुड नॉट बी इक्वल टू zero as we know that for every quadratic polynomial we have two zeros means two solutions alpha and beta are the zeros of this quadratic polynomial then what is the relation we have sum of the zeros alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a product of the zeros alpha into beta is equal to c by a so these are the relation between zeros and coefficients of a quadratic polynomial this already we discussed now the next one what we have cubic polynomial a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus b where a is not equal to 0 again a is not equal to 0 which is a leading coefficient as we know that for every cubic polynomial we have three zeros Let alpha, beta, gamma are zeros of this cubic polynomial. Now, what is the relationship between zeros and coefficient? Alpha plus beta plus gamma means sum of the zeros. What is the formula for sum of the zeros? Minus b by b. And here, alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus gamma into alpha is nothing but c by b. Product of zeros, alpha into beta into gamma is equal to minus d by d. Here you observe that the minus we are getting alternatively. First we have minus, next we have plus, next again we have minus. So this is nothing but relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial. And we have seen this concept in our previous class, and we have done some problems. how to find the relation between zeros and coefficients when polynomial is given how to find zeros and how to find the relation we have seen when zeros are given how to find the polynomial also we have seen that is about exercise number 2 now today what we are going to discuss so we are going to discuss about division algorithm of a polynomials What is the concept? Division algorithm of a polynomial means we are going to perform division operation between the polynomials. So this is not new for us. In class ninth also we have discussed how to divide a polynomial with another polynomial. Now the same concept we are extending here. and a few different problems are also there that we are going to discuss in this present class now the concept is division rule of a polynomials so we know how to add how to subtract and how to multiply we have four fundamental operations addition subtraction multiplication and division so how to add the polynomials and how to subtract the polynomials how to multiply the polynomials that and are very easy for us now the last operation which we have is division of a polynomial it is more easy and moreover a little bit sensitive steps are there you have to observe very carefully and you have to follow those steps then the calculation will be very very easy so you don't need to feel difficult 
about the division of the polynomial. So no need to feel any difficulty about the division of a polynomial, which is a very very easy concept. And from this, you can have a three mark question or a four mark question in the public board exams. So let us listen carefully. Let us follow the division rule so that we can do the calculations in an easy way. So what is division rule? Usually, when it comes to the numbers, the general division, we always divide. Bigger number with smaller number. We always divide bigger number with smaller number. Means here, twenty one. I am going to divide with three. I check three table. So three seven sir. Twenty one. We have a remainder zero. Now, what this three is for? This three is nothing but for. Divisor. This 21 is the number called dividend. Seven is the number called quotient. Zero is the number called remainder. So when 21 is a bigger number, is divided. With a smaller number, so we go in three table. We check the table of three. Three ones are three, three twos are six, three threes are nine, three fours are four, like that. Three sevens are twenty-one. So the total multiple we can take. So three sevens are twenty-one. So that the remainder zero. Once if the remainder gets zero, we stop our division process. Now after completion of this entire division. We have some terminologies. What are they? This three is nothing but called divisor. Twenty-one is nothing but called dividend. Seven is nothing but called quotient, and zero is nothing but called remainder. How we have this process in number system? The same process we have even in polynomials also. The same procedure we do have in Polynomials. What is that? Let us see. If there is a polynomial p of x, if there is a polynomial p of x, now this polynomial p of x is dividing with another polynomial g of x. This polynomial p of x is dividing with another. Polynomial g of x. As I told you here, the bigger number is always divisible with smaller number. Or maybe, for example, twenty-one by twenty-one with equal number also. With equal number also, we can divide. By understanding this concept, here we have a condition of between the polynomials. What is the condition? If p of x is a polynomial, has to divide the another polynomial g of x. You need to check a condition. What is the condition? Condition number one. Degree of p of x must to be greater than or equal to degree of g of x. Means the p of x polynomial's degree must to be Greater than or equal to g of x polynomial degree. So here the polynomial degree is four. Here the polynomial degree is four. When it is fourth degree polynomial, g of x degree must be less than or equal to four. It may be four, or three, or two, or one. This rule has to be. We have to verify this condition. So, degree of the polynomial p of x must be greater than or equal to degree of the polynomial g of x. Now, when we apply the division, means the polynomial p of x, I am dividing with the polynomial g of x. 
When we apply the division, in your case, we get some quotient and we get some remainder. While applying any division, either you apply the division operation between the numbers or between the polynomials, whatever it may be. Definitely, if you are performing a division operation, definitely you have a quotient and you have a remainder. So, what is the divisor here? G of x is the divisor. P of x is the dividend. Q of x is nothing but quotient. R of x is nothing but reminder. So, these are the polynomials we have. So, G of x is nothing but divisor. P of x is nothing but dividend. Q of x is nothing but quotient. R of x is nothing but reminder. So, these are the values we are going to get while performing division between the polynomials. Now, here we have a division rule. We have a division rule. Now, what is division rule? What is division rule? In class 9 also, we have this division rule. What is the division rule? Let me explain. Dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder. Dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder. This is called division rule. Means P of x when we are going to divide g of x, we have the quotient q of x and also we have the remainder r of x. This is the division rule between the polynomials. Dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder p of x is a polynomial. We are dividing with g of x. While dividing, we have quotient q of x and also reminder r of x. Now, this is the concept of division of rule of a polynomial. Now, let us see how to divide the polynomials with another polynomial that we are going to discuss now. Let us come for example number 7. Example number 6 also is there that you can try. Now let me discuss example number 7 from page number 32. Divide divide 3x cube plus x square plus 2x plus 5. 3x cube plus x square plus 2x plus 5. This is entire a polynomial means it is nothing but p of x by another polynomial 1 plus 2x plus x square this is nothing but g of x so what is given here they ask you to divide p of x with g of x p of x with g of x now as i told you we have a condition what is the condition the degree of p of x must be greater than or equal to degree of g of x. p of x, which degree polynomial it is? What is the degree of this polynomial? Third degree. So, degree of p of x is nothing but how much? 3. Degree of p of x is equal to 3. Now, this is g of x. And what is the degree of this polynomial? So, degree of g of x is equal to 2. So, from this what I can say that? I can say that 3 is greater than 2. So, 
we are able to divide the polynomial p of x with another polynomial g of x because the condition is satisfied what is the condition degree of p of x is greater than degree of g of x that is the first condition you need to observe we have to compare the degrees now and the other condition of the we have to check the polynomials whether the given polynomial is a complete polynomial or incomplete polynomial what is the meaning of complete and incomplete complete polynomial incomplete polynomial what it mean for example let us take the given polynomial 3x cube plus x square plus 2x plus 5y first you need to check whether you have all the terms in this polynomial or not first which term we have x cube x cube of the question have x square x square of the question have x power 1 next we have constant see 3 2 1 0 we have a proper order here means it is a cubic polynomial i have all the terms in this polynomial means i have cube to term square to term x to term and constant all the terms i have so that i can call it as a complete polynomial what i can say that complete polynomial for example x cube plus 2x plus 5 now what about this polynomial which is the polynomial it is it is also cubic polynomial now let us check do you have all the terms in this polynomial i have x cube term after x cube which term i have x term next what i have constant which term is not there here x square term is not there so x square term was missed here so that what we can call it as we can call it as incomplete polynomial what we can call incomplete polynomial so it is an example for complete polynomial and it is an example for incomplete polynomial now i have a doubt okay sir complete polynomial incomplete polynomial sir suppose if they have given incomplete polynomial if they have given incomplete polynomial how to solve very simple it is incomplete polynomial na no? i can make it as complete polynomial i can make it as complete polynomial how can we make see here x cube plus 2x plus 5. Which term is not there here? X square term is not there. So x square term with zero coefficient. So whatever the term was missed in the given polynomial, that should be taken with zero coefficient. Because zero if anything is zero. Zero if we add or subtract, nothing will be happen. there is no change in the polynomial so here it is an incomplete polynomial this incomplete polynomial i am making as complete polynomial with zero coefficient so i have x cube term x term and constant x square term is not there that i am making as zero into x square now you observe now i have x cube term x square term x to the constant now what it is now it is a complete polynomial what it is complete polynomial so incomplete polynomial we can convert as complete polynomial this is the second condition you need to observe condition number 1 you have to check the degrees of the polynomial condition number 2 the given polynomials are 
whether complete or incomplete polynomials you have to check both you have to check p of x polynomial and also g of x for both polynomials you have to check whether they are complete or incomplete if they are incomplete let us convert them into complete polynomial how to convert so whatever the term was missing in the polynomial that should be taken with zero coefficient here in this polynomial i don't have x square term so the the x square term i have taken with zero coefficient so finally x cube plus 0 into x square plus 2 into x plus 5 i have a complete polynomial i have a complete polynomial these are the two conditions we need to observe before going to divide the polynomials now let us come for the division now here p of x i have x cube term x square term x term and constant which is a complete polynomial x square term x term and constant which is also a complete polynomial both are complete polynomials are given so directly we can go for division let us see Three x cube plus x square plus two x plus five. This I am going to divide with x square plus two x plus one. Here it was given one plus two x plus x square. You have to write in descending order of the powers. Descending order of the power is big to small. So highest power. What is the highest power? Two. Next highest power one. Next Z. So x square plus x x square plus two x plus one. We are writing in descending order of the powers. Here also we have all descending order of the powers. Three, two, one, constant. Okay. Now in numbers we can go for the tables. Three table if we go for three sevens are twenty. So here I have a polynomial. How to go for a table? It is difficult. But I need some quotient here. How to find the quotient? Here these steps you have to follow very carefully. So step one. What is the first step I am doing here? That you have to. Whatever the step one and step two we are following, the same steps we should continue for all. First. The first term of the dividend. This is the dividend, and this is the divisor. What is the first term we have here? Three x cube. Three x cube by. What is the first term of the divisor? X square. So, the first term of the dividend. The first term of the divisor. These two we are going to divide. So, first term of the dividend is 3x cube. First term of the divisor is x square. So, 3x cube by x square. So, what we can get? 3x cube means what? 3 into x into x into x. X square means x into x. X x x x can get cancelled. Finally, what we have? 3x. By dividing the first term of the dividend, first term of the divisor, what we got? Three x. That three x we should write in quotient place. That three x we should write in which place? Quotient place. That is step one. Now, step two. What we have to do? Now, what is the quotient we have? 3x. What is the quotient we have? 3x. 3x into the divisor. What is the divisor we have? X square plus 2x plus 1. The divisor and the quotient we should multiply. So x square plus 2x plus 1. Let us multiply what we have. 3x into x square. 
3x cube. 3x into 2x, 6x square. 3x into 1, 3x. Now what is the value we have? 3x cube plus 6x square plus 3x. Take that value. 3x cube plus 6x square plus 3x. Hope you understood. Step 1. First term of the dividend by first term of the divisor. 3x cube by x square. What we have? 3x. That should be right in the place of quotient. Now we need to multiply this quotient and the divisor. Step 2 I am telling. After completion of the quotient, here I got the quotient is 3x. Next, we are going to multiply the quotient and the divisor. Step 2 that is. So, quotient 3x, divisor x square plus 2x plus 1. So, 3x into x square, 3x cube. 3x into 2x, 6x square. 3 twos are 6, x into x, x square. 3x into 1, 3x. So, the product what we have, that we need to write here. Now, let us go for subtraction. Subtraction means we need to change the signs. Here 3x cube is its sign positive. So, let us take minus. 6x square is also positive. Take it as minus. 3x is also positive. Take it as minus. Now, plus 3x cube minus 3x cube can get cancelled. Minus 6 plus 1 minus 5 x square minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 now let us take plus 5 here so after multiplying the product we have to write here 3x cube plus 6x square plus 3x we should subtract subtraction means we should change the signs positive will become negative Positive will be converted as negative. Positive is also converted as negative. So plus 3x cube minus 3x cube can get cancelled. Minus 6x square plus 1x square is minus 5x square. Minus 3x plus 2x is minus x. And we will get down the another term 5. Now, here whatever the steps we have done, the same steps we keep on continuing. Now, step 3. What is step 3 here? Again. Now, here I have a new dividend minus 5x square. This is the new dividend for us. Now, the first term of the dividend. What is the first term of the dividend? Minus 5x square. Now, the first term of the divisor. So, minus 5x square by x square. Here, x square, x square can get cancelled what I have minus 5. So the first term of the dividend, first term of the divisor. When we do this, x square, x square can get cancelled. Finally, what I have minus 5. Now, where we need to take that minus? So in quotient place. In place of quotient, we have to take minus 5. That is step 3. Next, what is the other step we need to continue with the new quotient minus 5? We should multiply the divisor. So, x square plus 2x plus 1. That is multiply. Minus into plus minus 5 into x square. 5x square. Minus into plus minus 5 into 10 x. Minus into plus minus 5 into 10 5. So, the product I have minus 5x square minus 10x minus 5. Now, let us change again signs. Here I have negative. So, negative will convert as positive. Negative will convert as positive. Negative will convert as positive. Now, plus 5x square minus 5x square can get cancelled. Here I have plus 10x minus 1x. So, 9x. Plus 5 on plus 5 makes what? Plus 
10. Now, whether we stop our calculation or we can continue our calculation, that you need to observe. As I told you that, degree of E of X must be greater than or equal to degree of G of X. This is the condition I have given for you. Now, this is our new dividend. What is its degree? 1. What is the degree of divisor? 2. 1 is not greater than or equal to 2. The degree of the dividend is 1. The degree of the divisor is 2. 1 is not greater than or equal to 2. So, we can't continue the calculation. We can stop here. So, this is the procedure of division of polynomials. Now, now you can observe it here. 9x plus 10 is nothing but what? It is nothing but our reminder. 3x plus 3x minus 5. What it is? It is nothing but our quotient. So, this is the procedure of division of the polynomials. These steps are very very important. When you are able to understand and when you are able to follow these steps, this calculation is very easy for us. Step 1. First term of the dividend by first term of the divisor. We will get the quotient. With this quotient, we should multiply the divisor. This is the process we need to continue. With this calculation, we are able to find the reminder. We are able to find the quotient. So, with this example number 7, by understanding this procedure, you can try example number 6 and example number 8 by your home and finish your class. In next class, we can go for another mode.